So we are up here in Tofu in Mozambique with Ryan Ribbink who is our surf guide um, for the Mozambique part of the Ticket to Ride trip. Ryan, how long have you been coming up to Mozambique for? Chris, it's been about 12, 13 years now I've been traveling up and down Mozambique. Um, loved it from the first day I came through the border. Uh, decided that this definitely was the lifestyle I wanted to pursue, doing the surf trips and all that. Um, for the last 45 years I've been doing surf trips, um, fully functional with vehicles, boats, all that kind of stuff. And um, taken off in quite a, in a bigger way than I thought it would do. And yeah, not too hard to please the clients. <laughs> pretty, pretty perfect place, isn't it? It is, it is pretty perfect when um, you look at South Africa and what we have there, then you come across the border, as you said earlier on, it's just, it's like one line and then it's just Mozambique kind of thing. It's not, it's not, there's a gradual change of vegetation or anything, it's just bang, straight into it. Um, you do realize that there's been a war here, you can see the resemblance of the war, you can see that the cultures and everything are, are way back, about 10 to 20 years from South Africa. Um, the people are really, really, really poor, but really, really happy. Um, your stuff's safe, you're safe, your vehicles are safe. Um, yeah, it's the kind of environment I'd like myself to grow up in and experience while it is like it is. That's something I find really interesting myself is how safe I do feel here and you know, being around. The people do seem happy, somehow it doesn't feel quite as... Well, that might be just as, yeah, not as intimidating and people who might be just as poor as people in South Africa are, seem to be happier in their lives. What do you think is it for you that has um, really made this attraction you have to, to this country? Well, without doubt, uh, the sun, the baggies and the t-shirt when you surf, <laughs> no wetsuits needed, crystal clean water, um, really good sand bottom waves, eh? Um, yeah. Just because sand bottom doesn't mean it's powerful. Trust me, you've got really, really good waves, really long waves, and uh, all good to have a good surf. Come in, order some seafood, grab a coconut, and so. So, I mean, you've been surfing for how many years now? It's been a good 30 years. Give away my age surfing. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good 20, 25 years, I think, eh, of my life. Okay, I mean, so obviously it. you've got all the experience and knowledge, and having competed to to be more than a high enough level to coach them. But I guess a slightly different actually. It's it's, it's you know, a slightly it's it's it's, right. it's more of taking a step backwards, um, sort of out the door, and then walking back through the door with people with you, sort of like bringing them up to a level that you think that they should be on. Sort of that's what it's. And and more. what's your take having having surfed for so long? I'm looking at people who have said the level these guys come on. They've literally gone from never having surfed before to when you see them, they've been surfing for 10 weeks, which as a surfer we know is a very, very short amount of time. Um, I mean, you must see different levels of course, but do, do you think the level they come at is is good for that length of time? or? I think it's good for the length of time, and I also think it shows to a lot of people that don't surf or want to surf that as long as you put in the time and you do have 10 weeks, which is, it's a good time to learn to get the basics and then come on like, like you say, the end Mozambique trip where there are waves, where it, are, it is good, where you can find long rides and actually use what you've learned to ride. And with you, with you being in the water from, from your first week in the trip to your last week in the trip, everything is better. Your fitness is better. Your wave knowledge is better. Your ocean knowledge is better. Your, the way you perceive surfing and what you're supposed to be doing and not, and not supposed to be doing is better. And by them putting in the time in, I can definitely see the, the results from that. And it shows you that surfing is, is a hard sport, but it's manageable if you're willing to do it. If you, you're willing if you to put, put the, the time, time in and the effort and that's, yeah, it is manageable. It's what we see. Fishing is a, uh, a second love of yours or passion um, it's one of the activities that you take the guys on what, what else I mean tell us more about that specifically you know the type of fishing you're doing and other stuff the guys get up to in Mozambique um, fishing I'm doing is a pretty new style of fishing it's called drop shotting um, it's definitely not a boring way of fishing we don't go sit three four five hours on a boat because the activity the, the means of the fishing within an hour hour and a half 
your arms are tired, you're tired, you're sore. You do catch a lot of fish this way. Um, and I enjoy not sitting in a room and doing nothing. I enjoy getting out there when there's things to do. Basically just living every day till it's fullest, whether it's surfing, fishing, 4 by 4 4 by 4 <laughs> up sand dunes, making an idiot of yourself or something like that. Yeah, I know, it's all good. Um, other activities, quad biking, all this kind of stuff, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It obviously everything pertains to a certain person. Um, but as in like whale, whale, whale shark watching, ocean safaris and all that kind of stuff, can't get much better, eh? I mean, you, you fall off a boat with a whale shark, you get on a boat, you cruise a coastline, you fall off a, on the other side of the boat, there's a manta ray right underneath your boat and a couple of dolphins in the distance. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't find that in many places of the world. Another another thing you seem quite, um, well, I guess you have to be interested in is your equipment that you have with. You look after your cars well, you check that everything's perfect, the boat that you, you know brought up for the first part of the trip. Out here in Mozambique, you are pretty much roughing it onto your equipment. If, if something goes wrong, you, you're going to know about it and yeah, you're going to struggle. You, you've got to realize that the equipment up here takes a lot of strain, especially the 4x4s. Four take a lot of hard work. Um, if you do get stuck in the middle of nowhere, it's not like you can pick up a phone and phone the AA or anything like that. <laughs> so you've basically got to carry like everything that you need that you think would go wrong in the vehicles with you. From tools to fan belts to oil to extra tins of petrol in case you run out in remote places. So your equipment does take a really, really big hammering, but without it, you won't be doing much of your trips. Yeah. It isn't good, a good thing to have it in a good running order. Which is why we definitely need to do along on this trip. <laughs> yeah, well, if anything goes wrong, it's... And I try not to panic either, because when I start panicking, I think everyone will panic. <laughs> so I to do it, eh? so, yeah, um, keep a straight face and try and sort the problem out. Alright, thanks a lot. Any any last words on Mozambique or the trips that you run? Awesome amount of people, awesome vibe amongst the crew. I enjoy that. Um, I've travelled around the world and experienced Indo and many a Maldives trip and many a, a reunion and a Mauritius trip. And jeez guys, it's on your damn doorstep. Eh? You don't have to go and don't spend to cash so for it, it's right down the road. Cool. So yeah, that's about all of it. Perfect, thanks a lot Ryan. Thank you. Cheers,